Excuse you. And take his back. Who? Do not be questioning the classic days. Always love me a classic, you know? The legends are back. Who? Maybe we shall build. Now many of you are probably familiar with Antec and their pretty epic history like 15 years ago. And the last time I worked with one of their cases was almost eight years ago, which was disappointing for like 90% of it. But they've got me interested in a new Performance One FT. Let's see if the legends are truly back and do a fun experiment to help you with future airflow and cooling ideas. So the concept is really trying to figure out how many fans do you really need for an AIO machine. This is a 360 AIO. We of course also have an air cooler, this beautiful Noctua one. So this, this video is going to be more relevant for more good people using the Performance One as an example because this thing has a lot of fan slots, okay? So first behind this easily removable front panel, we have triple 140 mil fans that are included with the Performance One FT. I mean, with a name like Storm 14030, I'm expecting some good performance out of these. It also looks like there's enough clearance for them to be installed outside of the frame. Also, is it just me or does the front remind you of a front of a vehicle, a particular Lexus? I see what you're doing there, Antic. Of course, there's a 120 mil fan in the back. Just don't forget to peel the plastic. Then we have three internal 120 mil mounts right on top of the power supply shroud. Now there's not enough height clearance for them to go underneath the power supply shroud, so they have to stay on top and that eliminates the bottom PCI bracket. At the top we have a removable metal cover. Underneath here we have a dust filter and an entirely removable fan bracket as well. One, two, nice. For easy installation outside of the case, you know. This would 100% simplify any cable management for the top of your motherboard. And this bracket will support triple 120s or 140, so we'll definitely utilize that. This is really going zero to hero with Antec products. They are AIO, power supply, fans, case. My gosh, this is almost like it's sponsored by Antec, which thank you so much for the partnership. I do want to prove that we're not shells and this is a legitimately like a well-performing enclosure and those front fans are putting in the work. So when we look at our charts, this is right in the middle of the pack. And even though I would love for that front panel to be slightly more open because when we do remove it, we do drop a few degrees. Uh, it is actually a fantastic sound barrier when it is applied because those front 140 mil fans, when they do move at full speed, they are a little bit loud. That front panel, man, is a fantastic sound barrier. I was not expecting it to block that much noise. The GPU is also totally under control with the Performance One FT. So the only thing I had to do was put in my fanciest hardware, an RTX 4080, the 1300, 17, so the 13,700, the 13700K, all for science to determine the best cooling configuration between an air cooler and the 360 AIO. So first I started with the Noctua cooler at stock configuration for the case fans running at full speed. And honestly, I was kind of shocked uh, at how low those temperatures were. I was expecting things to be in like the high 80s, but at the same time, temperatures were low, but I was reaching over 50 decibels on my reader. So a totally unrealistic way to run your PC and still stay married, you know, at least for me. So I normalized the fan speed to a cool library quiet 38 decibels, which is really quiet. And so my temperatures, yeah, sure they increased, but I'm still totally happy with those low 60s. Now, just for fun, I turned off the case fans to simulate like a really bad airflow uh, of Antec's previous cases. And two things were clear. Number one is that massive GPU heatsink is just a complete show off. And number two, if you have not yet already bought that beautiful Noctua cooler for the performance, you should buy it for the looks. So then what I had to do is insert six more fans, three on top of the shroud and three on top of the case. But to be fair, the fan right above the power supply is completely blocked by the rectangle underneath. But to my surprise, temperatures on the CPU got worse by a few degrees versus my initial stock configuration. And this makes total sense as we're now introducing vertical air movement so that heat from the GPU is probably getting intertwined with the CPU cooler. And also because I'm running everything at 100%, not only is this system incredibly loud at like close to 53 decibels, but there's a lot of turbulence inside the case for airflow and air is not getting to where it needs to be efficiently. Bringing those fans 
down to 50%, I am once again shocked at how bad this configuration really is for the CPU cooler, as it is six degrees hotter versus my stock setup. So the takeaway is to stick to this horizontal air movement when you have proper front intake, because otherwise cool air isn't going where it needs to be. Now, because we have six fans that can do vertical air, so three in the shroud and three at the top, I rotated the cooler into the chimney mode, and my goodness, I did not expect the following results. So regardless of stock configuration or with those six additional fans, temperatures were basically identical with horrible CPU temperatures, which makes sense since the graphics card basically blocks most of the intake air for the CPU, plus anything that gets in there is already kind of warmed up by the GPU. But still, I did not expect the temperatures to stay the same, you know, six fans versus 12 fans. But the takeaway is that chimney mode for these types of cases with this type of airflow is an absolute no go. And so then I swapped out the air cooler for the 360 AIO and I'm running these tests for 30 minutes just so that we can let the liquid inside the AIO come to temperature and equalize. And it turns out this is actually the most ideal scenario because all the heat from the CPU is exhausted directly from the top, allowing the GPU to remain super cool when you blast it with air. But even running things at 50% for that super quiet machine gets me better temperatures versus the air cooler with the same fan speed configuration. Now populating three shroud fans in there helps in no way whatsoever. So in reality, only two of those fans can somewhat breathe because the, the one in the back is completely choked by the power supply. So once we compare the results with the stock fans, just the stock fans that are included with the case, which is how you should run cases of this similar setup between air and AIO, you can see the difference is pretty huge, both at 50% fan speed, uh, which is that super quiet operation, and 100% at full power for both the CPU and the GPU. So that 360 AIO not only cools the CPU better, but actually helps remove some of that heat away from the GPU as well without compromising on the CPU temps. But that Noctar cooler will stay in my heart. It's a beautiful performer, especially because of how quiet you can get at uh, under 38 decibels. So one of the most interesting things for me about this experiment is really figuring out that if you have sufficient enough intake from the front, you don't need to do anything in terms of adding additional fans for the top or the power supply shroud. I mean, $159 is not cheap, but you also get really good airflow out of the box and fantastic 30 millimeter fans that come with the case. So anything you can populate in there. And I've reconfigured this case four times and the user experience is really, really seamless. My only reservation is that if you mount any uh, fans on top of the power supply shroud, it does create noise and not that much cooling potential uh, for the CPU. It might help with the GPU depending on how hot your graphics card is, but it turns out this 4080 with this massive cooler is running perfectly cool. I do appreciate some innovative features like the screen at the top that can display CPU and GPU temperature. You install this Antec iUnity software that has to be running in the background and uh, it pulls CPU and GPU temperature, although you cannot select which GPU you want to highlight the temperature of. Antec, please fix. And who knew when it comes to populating as many fans inside the enclosure, it is all about the balance of where those fans go and what the RPM of those fans is. If you're buying something of this caliber with excellent front intake, just keep it stock, you know? You don't have to experiment, but when you do introduce any type of restriction to the front panel for a different case, for example, make sure that you have additional exhaust as that in my previous testing has definitely helped. So the question, is Antec really back? They're definitely on the right track to grab some market share. And even though this is a sponsored video, I like this case. The ease of use, the awesome airflow performance and all the options that you can fit inside of it, plus a dual temper glass that can uh, sort of angle away. Although it does not help the temperatures, I've tested with the glass angled away in case you want like a little additional performance if you're running something extensively, but opening the side panel for some reason didn't do much. But anyway, let me know what you guys think of the Antec Performance One FT. FT stands for full tower in case you weren't aware. And uh, yeah, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you next video.